Um, I want to approach this week's parasha by starting with Plato, uh, the Greek philosopher. Uh, he created this idea called dualism. And uh, this uh, idea uh, was morphed into something else when uh, the Gentiles took over the, um, the Jewish movement. Uh, the, 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 the Nazarenes, if you want, the, the ones who proclaimed uh, Yeshua as their Messiah, uh, they divorced themselves from Judaism. And because they did that, they took the Greek mentality of understanding Scripture. This, uh, I, I, again, started with Plato. Christianity took it over and morphed it into something else. By the end of the uh, 18th century, again, the Christianized version of, of, of uh, Plato's idea was morphed into something else. Uh, and what, what uh, happened at the end of the, uh, at the beginning of the 18th centuries, uh, the period we call the Enlightenment, um, we, can, we, we, we saw a, a divorce between what you, what you believed, right, and what was real. So you had uh, your beliefs and you had the facts, right? And whatever was factual was real. Whatever was belief, wishful thinking, right? And they started to have this division. Uh, around the year 2000, again, this idea morphed uh, into something else, and we have now what we call a secular society. This secular society uh, believes in a complete rejection of God and has uh, established uh, man as the center of everything. And um, what we have now is problematic. Because according to secular understanding, we are allowed to do whatever we want without consequences. So if you open the TV and you look any program, whether it be for kids, any movie, any TV series, you will notice something. There's always a homosexual or a homosexual couple, or something to that nature. If you open the, the TV, you will notice something else. There's an agenda of pushing the transgender idea onto us. They're not asking us our, our opinion, for those of us who don't believe in this idea. They're just imposing it on us. And the worst is that they're doing it first to kids, okay? So that's the first thing they're doing. Teenagers, kids, they want to indoctrinate them and they want to show them that this is normal, this is okay. So you have big movie stars today that say, well, my kid, my son said that, he said that he's a girl. So I'm gonna treat him, him, as a little girl and I'm gonna dress him up, dress him up as a little girl because that's what he says. He thinks he is, so I'm going to help him achieve this idea of him being a girl. So you can see all these ideas. You open the TV and you see people fighting, right? My body, my womb, right? I can kill whatever I want to uh, with, uh, that is in my body. So I have a baby, eight months old, nine months old, doesn't matter, can kill it. So we have this type of society today that is telling us that we can do whatever we want. No repercussions. No consequences. It's a free-for-all. And if you say that you are against it, you are abnormal. You're the one with the problem. And so we... We open the Torah and we, and, we, and we read what God is telling us and he says, you know, I'm teaching Israel 
that if you are faithful to the covenant, I will bless you. And I will show you how I will bless you. If you are unfaithful to the covenant, there will be consequences to your unfaithfulness. And this is the principle that the Torah is teaching us. When we decide to be unfaithful to the standards of God, we will reap a society that is corrupt, that is deformed. Everything that it was morally bad today is morally good and acceptable. And this is the environment in which we are uh, living in. And I can see that uh, those who suffer the most are our kids, uh, teenagers. I can see it in my son, I can see it in my daughter because they're struggling. They're struggling to understand what society is trying to give them as the norm. And they're, they're battling, bat, battling the ideas of what I'm teaching them a, a, according to the Torah standards and what society is trying to impose on them. And it's, it's difficult for them. And I've I've entered into a study of how can I explain the evolution of secularism and how, what tools can I give our teenagers so that they could filter what they see without coming out as, as f uh, religious fanatics. Just as, you know, just looking at the facts and saying, this is not correct because of this and this and this. And I'm trying to figure out a system or a grid that will help our teenagers. And I, I haven't figured it out because there's a lot of concepts, right? Philosophical concepts, sociological concepts that are very complicated to understand. And, and you have to enter into philosophy, into world history, and you have to break it down. So, you know, our kids... Uh, they ha they're limited in their understanding, so I have to bring, not dumb it down, but simplify it, right? Uh, and it's, it's, it's a struggle, because I see the, the reality, and you know, sometimes as a community, we ask ourselves, where is, where is the youth of our congregations? You know, where are our kids going? You know, we, we ask those questions, and, and I, I was very preoccupied from the very beginning I came here, when I came back, I remember Peggy told me, you know, the world is, is after our kids, you know, and it's true. So I, and I'm trying to, to uh, uh, um, do something for our teenagers and our kids, but I haven't, I haven't arrived there yet. I really want to uh, find something that will help, you, uh, help them out. So this is our reality. This is our, uh, our, our system today. And... Uh, the only thing I, I, I could say to you is what I told David last night because David yesterday was sitting with me and we were eating at the table and he said, Dad, what is all this about abortion? Can we kill babies? Are we allowed to kill babies as we want? Because that's what they're saying. I said, yes, I understand. I know that's what they're saying. And the first thing I say to him is, what do you think? Because don't forget, we were created in God's image. So I, I, I won't start by imposing my beliefs on him. I want him to think by himself. And I, I tell him, what do you think? And automatically comes out of his mouth, I think it's wrong. I think there's something that is not good. But he can't explain it why. He just feels it, that it's not normal, it's not good. Right? So our job as parents, as community is to always be sure to uh, uh, teach our kids the principles of Torah. It's not easy, right? They're going to struggle with the, these principles. We, we struggle as adults with the principles of Torah, right? Uh, and so this is what I've, I've, I've been working on this week in my head, you know, thinking about the kids in our community, you know, trying to, trying to see what I can do for them. And it's not, it's not easy, but hopefully God will help me and Give me some ideas. Shabbat shalom.